Hello everyone, my name is Chandra Sharma. I'm director of Horizon Computers. I would be uh, talking about uh, firewall technologies today and I'm hoping that uh, this particular session uh, will be immensely helpful to all the candidates uh, who are pursuing anything in Cisco, CCNA, NPI or well anybody who is dealing in security. Now for a very long time I'm taking training for firewalls and uh, <coughs> looking at the environment and looking at the trends today uh, invariably you are bumping up into the security domain uh, you have to know security you have to know VPN especially uh, and security is actually matter of fact becoming an influencing factor when it comes to designing uh, anything whether it's data center service wider network a small customer or a network enterprise network whatever that might be so uh, well we will be spending time understanding uh, firewalls and uh, well the session will be recorded in multiple parts so uh, I am supposed to cover three core technologies in firewall um, packet filter firewalls which we would be doing today and then we would be moving on to stateful packet inspection algorithm and proxy firewall so we'll take it step by step now usually uh, anybody who's having uh, even a CCNA level knowledge or even pursuing CCNA uh, curriculum uh, should be uh, comfortable with this uh, <coughs> slide uh, you should be uh, at least having that level of exposure to understand and utilize this <coughs> particular uh, training video fully. <coughs> Excuse me for the bad throat. <coughs> now, uh, let's uh, come to the business uh, and what is a firewall and how will you define a firewall. So, uh, you know, uh, before firewall came into existence, uh, the devices we were having in networking was pretty simple. It was a router and it was a switch. So router was basically your edge device for WAN and for ISP connection and switch was primarily your local area network device. So network was pre uh, pretty simple. Uh, we were uh, having only two devices to work on with. But uh, as <coughs> we started using a router for firewall uh, edge network address translation technology came into picture and most importantly 1988 we uh, the world faced the first warm attack uh, on internet uh, known as Morris uh, attack which was basically a result of a software developed by one of the uh, lecturer and scientist uh, Mr. Morris so and that was sort of a you know, it was created to uh, be uh, harmless uh, uh, software uh, primarily to test out uh, things on internet uh, but it actually uh, resulted into a huge losses and uh, it was a uh, dreaded uh, virus. Uh, it went into court of law as well. So in 19 1988 we had our first hit in terms of uh, a network based warm which is spreading on internet. So that was something which is a unique scenario unheard of unseen of and uh, uh, well all the uh, people in networking uh, was supposed to take notice of uh, how do you take care of uh, something like this to happen in future so <coughs> in 1990 we got uh, the first firewall packet filter firewall and uh, we will be uh, stressing and uh, deliberating on uh, packet filter firewall technologies today but well if anybody ask you okay what is firewall how will you define it you know a router uh, is creating multiple broadcast domain uh, based on layer 3 addresses in your network a switch is creating multiple callers in domain and uh, what exactly is a firewall doing so I'm just sticking to the basic uh, definitions over here so uh, well this is how we define a firewall uh, this is pretty much my own uh, definition uh, so it is either a software or a hardware uh, hardware comes with an embedded operating system uh, which is you know developing or dividing your computer network into multiple segments you can say router is uh, creating multiple segments switch is also creating multiple segments so what's the big deal about firewall well firewall is going to create security segment or segment based on security requirements okay uh, a router does not create uh, segmentation based on security requirement it creates segmentation based on layer 3 addressing a switch creates callers in domain based on MAC address so uh, or you can say VLAN now I'm not getting into all that but primarily routing and switching devices are internet working devices which focus on addressing so they, their segmentation is primarily based on address so the question comes into picture is well does firewall also use addresses for segmentation yes by default your firewall work as a router and uh, every interface of a firewall is supposed to be a different subnet the same principle applies uh, on the router 
We also have transparent firewalls or layer 2 firewalls which are capable of working as a bridge and uh, they uh, just act as a bridge uh, using MAC address for forwarding and filtering. So firewall can use layer 3 address, layer 2 address, that's not a problem. The entire idea is the purpose. What is the purpose of a firewall? Why are you bringing a firewall in my network? So the idea of bringing a firewall in the network is security. And uh, we would like to divide our network uh, into multiple security segments. All right. So if we have divided our network into multiple security segments, in the diagram you see uh, there are two basic segments, uh, untrusted segment which is internet and everything in the private network is considered part of the private segment or a trusted segment. So fine, we have divided our network into multiple security segments, uh, then what? So uh, the second part is again very important. Uh, firewall will not allow any traffic to move from one security segment to another security segment unless and until you have policies which allows the traffic to do so. So the second part and the most important part of firewall configuration is to configure policy. Now firewall is a policy driven device, uh, routing switching is an algorithm de driven device. If OSPF has a route, it will forward. Uh, it does not think, okay, should I forward, should I not forward? Okay, so that's the way algorithm of routing switching is designed. You have the destination address forward. A firewall is not just an algorithm based device. It is heavily policy based device. So, okay, I have the route, I have the reachability, I can reach the destination. Now the question is, uh, is it allowed? And who's going to decide what is allowed, what is not allowed? That's precisely what a firewall is supposed to do. So firewall is going to bring in policy. It's going to bring in policy, enforce policy in your network and it will decide who can and who cannot move from one segment to another segment. So if you want to go from one segment to another segment, uh, you have to go through firewall and policies will control whether you can access resources or you cannot access resources. It is no longer just a question of reachability. Okay, reachability should be there. Okay, but then just having reachability, just having routes uh, is not the end of it. You got to have specific policies which allow you. So when you are bringing in firewall, the idea is to bring in a policy device, a policy driven device, which creates policies, okay, regarding who should be allowed, who should not be allowed from one segment to another segment. Now we can have different uh, segments, we will look at uh, that uh, slide further, how many segments can you have etc. But uh, if we just want to uh, no, uh, uh, sum it up uh, again, uh, so firewall is basically dividing my network into multiple security segments. So when you're working on a firewall, you have to understand uh, what, from security point of view, how your network is uh, placed. How would you like to uh, your network to be a design? You know, like I can have multiple departments, and I can say, fine, this department will be this segment, this department will be this segment. So there are multiple permutation combinations which are at play over here which as a designer as engineer you will have to go and check how you wish to implement the security okay <coughs> and second part is the policy part so you want to ensure that all the traffic pass through the firewall okay then only firewall is in a position to apply the policy now firewall basically is part of your network okay so it's not that just putting a firewall somewhere is going to work you have to work with your network team to ensure that your design, your layout and your traffic flow is such that the traffic which you want is going across the firewall. I mean, you don't want a scenario where you have a firewall but the traffic is sidestepping it. That means the traffic is taking another path in which the firewall is not there and the firewall inspection is not happening. So having a firewall uh, will not have any advantage there. Okay, so once you put a firewall, you need to ensure that your routing switching team is coordinating with you and you are taking everything through the firewall. Okay, so in a network security, see, you cannot ignore networking. Okay, you can just put a firewall box and uh, expect magic out of it. No, it does not happen that way. So, a network and security is a joint effort. Your security team has to work with the network team in ensuring the traffic flow, etc., all the patterns are as per what your desired uh, design is. Okay. Now let's move forward and uh, let's look into the firewall design <coughs> and again see I'm, I'm trying to keep everything very simple okay though we will be getting into certain uh, complicated examples later on but uh, now talking from firewall design point of view um, we started with the basic model and in basic model there are only two segments so there is a trust segment and there is an untrust segment now if I go back to the previous slide uh, I can say 
there is a private network there is a public network uh, the public network is internet now this is where you require a firewall I mean you don't trust the internet this is uh, uh, from where you are likely to get all your virus worms all kind of attacks malware you know whatever bad things are there so you expect the internet uh, uh, you know to <coughs> uh, get you all these kind of bad traffic not necessarily maybe the bad traffic uh, can come from the private network as well maybe one of your PC is compromised so and so forth we'll, <coughs> we'll look into what happens then but uh, uh, generally you would not be trusting the traffic coming from the internet and internet will be considered as an untrust zone the entire private network will be considered as trust so you want to keep, uh, keep, it, keep it very simple you are going to have two segments uh, you are going to divide your network into two segments a trust segment and untrust segment the entire private network will be considered as trust segment and the entire public segment or internet will be considered as untrust segment now usually uh, the policy we configure on uh, this kind of model is to allow all traffic from trust to untrust that means you allow everything to move from private to public however you do not allow anything from public to private now different firewall vendors uh, behaves differently but more or less this is a general motto this is how things function most of the time obviously uh, vendor A can differ with vendor B yes but uh, in general this is a principle uh, with which we work with okay so uh, you may f uh, find that uh, in a particular band uh, on a particular vendor this is not the way it is implemented might be so but then I'm so I'm talking in general this is how most of the vendor implement the firewall solution okay so uh, we want to keep it simple put everything from trust to untrust everything is allowed untrust to untrust nothing is allowed and uh, can we modify that yes you can of course modify that and you can create your custom policies and uh, well uh, you can get the desired result as you wish but this is the basic set of policy which we have in a basic model now one of the problem we face with the basic model is not I tell you what basic model was what uh, so let let's allow people from the private network to access internet and uh, your firewall keep in mind act as an internet gateway that means all the traffic towards internet will flow through firewall now if you want to send all the traffic uh, from to internet from the firewall that means you have to perform certain things like NAT is compulsory you cannot access traffic from private network to internet without having a translation done so yes firewall is supposed to do the translation as well okay so yeah all these things comes with the package okay firewall primarily is acting as your ISP gateway and everybody from private network is going to move to internet using the firewall fine uh, well so nobody is expected to come from internet and access your private network most of you know in general let's say if we keep it very simple so the basic model was designed with this approach that okay uh, the traffic is going to be like one way from private to public nothing is coming from public to private but what if uh, you would like to have uh, people from internet who should be allowed certain access to your private sources now if that is a scenario then what happens you are exposing the entire private or trusted network just because couple of servers should be accessed over internet second thing is keeping all the servers and all the workstations in a single security zone does not allow you to up, uh, you know uh, uh, option of providing or putting policies well I cannot keep the client and server in the same segment because if client one of the client gets infected there is a uh, risk you are running that the server gets infected as well so ideally I should to keep the servers in isolation this is what has happened with firewalls you know the network design has changed we are keeping everything in a different segments today Fire servers are kept in an isolated uh, <coughs> segments today um, different VLAN accepted by the firewall DMZ etc so uh, things have changed but then there is a merit in that you cannot afford to have all the clients all the server everything in the same firewall segment keep in mind whatever devices you are putting in the same security segment you cannot have policies you cannot have firewall inspection for them because firewall inspections comes with a picture when you travel from one segment to another segment so if you are in the same segment there is no firewall in the picture and that basically means that uh, uh, you are at a risk because the firewall does not have an opportunity to inspect the traffic or to apply the policy so uh, we realize that we need to have these kind of servers 
in a separate uh, uh, security uh, zone itself and demilitarized zone or DMZ uh, is uh, the word which is used to define such segments. So uh, this particular uh, security segment is created so that we have people from internet accessing servers. Those servers will be put in the different segment. Now if you put these servers in a different uh, segment that is a demilitarized zone the advantage is that people from internet are accessing or user from internet accessing DMZ they are not getting into the private segment okay also if you wish to allow uh, the traffic coming from private to DMZ to be inspected by the firewall you have that option it's like I don't trust the private or the internet anybody coming to the server will have to go through certain security check the moment you create a segment and put certain traffic into or certain servers or resources into that segment it allows firewall to create policies apply the rules okay and enhance your entire security so again how you wish to design your network is up to you uh, there is no specific template as such which we can use but there are three different segments uh, which are defined which are well defined and generally used the trust untrust and the DMC okay and what is the role of DMC I hope that is clear another advantage is that if you are workstation let's say gets affected the chances of server getting affected is not there because server is in a different segment so today our approach to network design is based on segmentation we uh, want uh, resources to be uh, allocated as per the security design uh, isolation is important we do not want direct access direct access does not allow security policy to come into picture but at the same time you know you don't want to have multiple segments so you have to keep a balance multiple segment basically means too many policies and uh, it can become a bit of a, a challenge to uh, manage them troubleshooting can become pretty complex so you know you need to find out a balance you don't want to uh, create very few segments or too few segments or you don't want too many also again the right approach is the balance as per the requirement okay but just keep in mind that if you have two devices in two security segment that gives firewall an opportunity to apply the rules inspections and all the checks if the two resources are part of the same security segment then you do not have that opportunity so what resources should be allowed from where etc this is basically the key to design your security uh, or you design your firewall uh, properly right so I hope that we are through with the the basic and the advanced model as such why are, or why are we having different trust or why are we having sorry different segments and what is the advantage what is the uh, significance of a DMZ segment okay